Welcome back to our uh, video series on fundamentals of investments. I believe this is the uh, fourth installment in the series. Previously, we talked about on basic um, stock return calculations. Then uh, we discussed how to make uh, geometric and arithmetic average return calculations. And in the previous video, we started talking about expected returns, which is quite useful forward-looking measure of investment performance. So we will continue from there in this video, moving on to a new concept called return volatility. So first of all, why do we need this, right? Volatility. Oops, volatility. So in the previous video, we discussed expected returns. Now, what you need to understand is that risk and return are the two sides of the same coin. So when discussing performance, we should discuss both together, right? Typically, higher returns come at higher risk. So expected return, while a very useful measure, is not sufficient for um, um, evaluating a success or failure investments without talking about return volatility, which is a measure of risk. So just to go back to the previous uh, example, when we discuss expected returns, we talked about a stock, which has a price of 100 today, which could go up to either 120 in a year's time or down to 90 with equal probability, okay, 0.5 probability. So this is a 20% return if the price goes up. And if it goes down, it's a 10% loss or a minus 10% return. Now, how did we calculate expected return? Our formula for the expected return was that we take each probability for each state. So there are two states here. Okay, so I starts from one. And there are, let's say, n states in general, but in this case, just two. And then we have the return observations, right? So 20% minus 10%. So this is expected return. Okay. Now we need a measure for our return volatility. To do that, we have to actually learn two measures. One is two statistical measures. One is a variance of uh, returns, and one is standard deviation of returns. So we will begin with the variance because then the standard deviation is simply the square root of variance. Okay, And I will explain why we need these two measures. So let's begin with the uh, variance. Okay, So the formula will look similar, but this time around, uh, variance is simply by square deviations from the expected return. Okay, so this is how we compute variance or just to make it clearer again, we start from the first state, there are n states, we will uh, use the probability in each state, but now we will have r minus i. Here we are. Okay. So why why is it not enough to compute the variance, and why do we need uh, the square um, um, standard deviation, which is the square root of this? The reason is that we are taking the square of these deviations from the mean here. We can think of this as the uh, expected mean return, okay? Uh, so by moving on to standard deviation of returns, we are essentially uh, moving back to the same scale as the expected return. So that, that makes the comparison uh, easier to interpret, okay? And why do we have this sort of square term, why don't we just look at deviations from the mean, right? 
The reason is that if you don't take the squared term, if you simply sum up the deviations from the mean, you would get zero because positive deviations would cancel out against negative ones and the results would be zero. But that doesn't mean that the stock is risk-free. It is actually risky. So to avoid that scenario, we have to take uh, the squared deviations rather than the simple or raw deviations. Okay, so let's make these uh, calculations for this uh, stock. So let's begin with the easier one, the expected return. So we have 50% probability of a 20% return plus 50% probability of a minus 10% return. And this will give me an expected return of 5%. Great. Now I can move on to calculating uh, return volatility. So what do I need here? I will begin with the first state. So you need to go state by state. So if you have 10 states, you will have 10 terms. Begin with the probability. Okay, so I'm now calculating the variance. So 0 0.5 times the squared deviation from the mean. So the return observation is 20% minus the expected return. So the mean return is 5%. Take the square, okay. Plus, move on to the next one. Again, the probability for the next state is 0.5. It doesn't have to be, right? So this could be 0.6, this could be 0.4, right? You know, the important thing is that they should add up to one. Okay, minus 10%, minus 5%. Again, take the square, right? So I've got 0 0.5 times, oops, sorry, let me undo here, 15% damage, 0 point times minus 15% squared, right? And of course, 15% squared, uh, is the same thing as minus 15% squared. So I can actually simplify this. So 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 is one. So this is simply 15% uh, squared. And that is gonna be, I believe, 2.25%. And now to get the return volatility, I need to take the square root of this. And I can see that if this is 15% squared, of course, the square root of that will be simply 15%. So this is the squared, um, sorry, standard deviation of the return, so return volatility, which is 15%. So now I have a more complete assessment of this investment opportunity. So the expected return of this stock is 5% with a return volatility of 15%. Now it's easier to compare the stock with other similar stocks. For example, if I come across another stock which gives 5% return, but with a lot higher volatility compared to 15%, uh, then clearly this stock could be prefer preferable to that one, right? For the same level of return, this would uh, be less risky. Or conversely, if I find a stock with the same level of return, but lower volatility, then that one would be pro uh, preferable to this one because now that one is offering the same degree of return with uh, less risk. Or if I, among the, um, let's say, investment opportunities that have 15% probability, I can compare their expected returns and can go for the highest one. So if this is the highest one, I would go for this stock. But if there's another stock which offers 15%, uh, profitability uh, volatility with let's say eight percent expected return then of course i would choose uh, that one okay i think that's uh, all i uh, want to talk about uh, in this video when we start talking about portfolio theory then we will see that actually you know variance or standard deviation is not enough then we have to actually think about the covariance between the stocks how they move each other in a portfolio and things will get quite interesting as actually by putting more stocks into a portfolio we would be able to eliminate 
part of the risk uh, for free, right? So that, that's one of the key insights from portfolio theory. But at this stage, uh, at, we have at least one measure uh, to, to use, which is return volatility to assess the riskings of investment opportunities. Once again, thank you for uh, watching this video and we will catch up in another one.